Things Toys. Today I have a review for you that I've been very excited about for quite some time. It was announced back at Toy Fair. Actually, I think it was discovered via a GameStop leak even before Toy Fair. Uh, but this is the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe Castle Greyskull. So this box is absolutely massive. It's not going to fit in my normal review station, so I decided to do this half of the review in front of the camera. Um, I thought this was coming out way later in the year when it was leaked on GameStop. It said like December 2019, and then I thought I heard June. But one day I was on Google, and the kind of the homepage of Google now displays articles, and it said for whatever reason Walmart.com has exclusive rights to sell this like a month before everyone else gets it. I followed the link. Took me to Walmart's uh, page for this and bought it, went through, got free shipping, was here within two days. So it's here early and it's fantastic. Some of this box art is just amazing. And I do apologize because I know there is glare from the lighting, so I apologize for that. But I just wanted to show off the box real quick because it is fantastic. Got Skeletor hanging out here on the side. Very, very cool. Of course, we got He-Man on this side. Looking fantastic. The bottom, not too exciting. Just a barcode and other such things. Uh, but if we take a look, let me rotate this around so I can show off the back. And it shows off all of the features, uh, all the characters that it comes with down there. So this thing is absolutely fantastic. And the thing that's even cooler, I'm going to try to open this up for you so I can show you that inside the packaging is actually really impressive as well. So I have to open up this flap. And then when you first open this flap, you can see you get Skeletor showing off the throne room trap door. And again, I apologize for the light glare. But that's as soon as you open up the top flap. Then this whole thing opens up. You have to take off these side flaps. Here we go. So, first of all, this is the instruction booklet. <laughs> it is quite thick. If we rotate this around, you can see the inside of the packaging. And again, I apologize for the glare. But that's absolutely beautiful. I really, really love that. And then the next part, which I think is really cool, we have numbered bags, which is very appreciated. But you get these four boxes. So here is the first box with He-Man. The second box, Skeletor. The third box, has Man at Arms and the Sorceress. And then the fourth box has Tila and Beast Man. So, really cool packaging. I absolutely love everything about this packaging. Very beautiful, very fun. Let's go ahead and check out the set itself. So, here's the set fully assembled with everything that comes with it. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. As you can see here, there are six figures included. I guess six and a half if you include the small falcon that comes with the sorceress. And then two weapon racks with a ton of accessories. And this, I just can't get over how great this is. I really, really love the way this set turned out. I just wanted to kind of show off everything all together. Uh, and then next we're going to take a closer look at all of the figures and accessories. All right, so here are the six figures that are included in the set. You can see it's a little disproportionate as far as heroes and villains, getting four hero characters and only two villain characters. But something that I really do think is neat, aside from the Sorceress and Falcon being exclusive to this set, the other five characters are actually more modeled on the mini comics that were originally packed in with the toys. So they're not the same variations. If you're like me and you've been collecting all the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe stuff, all of the Mega Constructs hero releases in that anthology series they do, 
have been more closely resembling the filmation cartoon designs. So I think it's really neat that instead of just giving you the same six characters, well, five, because again, Sorceress is exclusive. Instead of just giving you the same five figures you probably already have, they did variations on them. And I have to say, they look great. I'll bring in the other figures in a little bit so we can do comparisons as we go through these. Uh, but I'm going to move these guys back. And of course, we have to start with the man himself, He-Man. So we'll take a closer look here. I think he looks great. They did a really nice job. The harness looks good. The shield, he does come with an axe. He also comes with a sword. And again, the sword is more modeled off of the mini comics than the Filmation cartoon. But still looks great. Color scheme looks good. And the nice thing about these, let me remove them from his little base, they have a ton of articulation. If you're not familiar with Mega Constructs figures at all, they're so well done. I mean, the head is on a ball joint. You have a hinge in the shoulder as well as a swivel. You have 90 degree and a spin, and well actually I guess 180, no it does only do 90 degree bend in the elbow, but also spins around. The wrist completely spins around. You have a limited torso turn, and that's because you actually build these figures. And there's a little track, the top part of the torso has kind of a small ball, a uh, little nubbin rather, that fits into a track in the bottom of the waist, and that allows it to only turn somewhat. So don't go crazy trying to turn that 180 degrees or 360 ball joint in the hip 90 degrees in the knee and then the rest of the leg is a solid piece but i mean they look absolutely fantastic so i actually have a couple different he-man to compare him to this was from the first wave of the mega constructs heroes and you can see slight variations in color but mostly the same he's got a different facial expression which is pretty cool and you can see that the accessories here are a little bit more of a silver as opposed to the light gray, but that's the more like filmation cartoon sword. And you can see that that one is a little different, but overall pretty cool. And then he also have a He-Man from the Wind Raider set, which also comes with an ax, but again, slight variations in color. I kind of think I like this color scheme, the little bit lighter color scheme for his boots, but overall they both look great. And they're both fantastic figures. They all have the same articulation. But again, different uh, facial expression there. So very cool. And the nice thing is, they all have this little loop in the back of the harness there. And you can see that's how I'm storing the sword. So I love that about these figures. I love uh, the ability to store the sword back there. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and we'll put He-Man off to the side. I'll peg him back onto his base. And it's very simple, just two peg holes in the bottom, one of each foot. And so you just pop him back on there. So there he is. And so I'll put him off to the side. And next up, we'll take a look at Skeletor. They did such a great job with Skeletor. You can see the kind of darker blue kind of... I don't know how to exactly <laughs> describe it, but kind of swirled into the lighter blue plastic. He's got the darker purple for the hood. The Havoc staff looks fantastic. It's hard to see, but the eyes are painted red in there, which looks amazing. So again, just to compare, this is the Skeletor from the Mega Constructs Heroes line. And they both look good, but I think because they gave him kind of a... I think this is supposed to be more like the original toy. He's got kind of a yellowish purple. I'm sorry, a yellowish green for the face there. And his eyes are painted purple as well. But just the darker purple against the blue, I think, really pops. And I just think that looks so much better. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. And then again, we have a Skeletor that came with the Wind Raider set. And he's got a couple different variations. You can see his feet are completely purple as opposed to just like those um, ankle bracers or, or <laughs> shin bracers, whatever you would call them. And this one does come with the purple sword, which none of the other releases have. So I do appreciate having that purple sword. But I have to say, I think this version of Skeletor looks the best out of all three. They just, that darker purple really pops against the blue. And the detail and the paint on the face, I think, is my favorite so far. That's really, really well done. And again, all the same articulation as He-Man. Just looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, next up, we'll take a look at Beast-Man. Now again, this is Beast-Man from the mini-comics, so he is drastically different in color scheme. Uh, very much just kind of red and maroon <laughs> is kind of the two colors he's got going on. But he does have some clip-on armor here on the shoulders and on the wrist. 
and then he's got this piece here for his chest. But overall, I think he looks great. Here is the Beast Man from the Mega Constructs Heroes, and as you can see, very differently painted. I feel like this is closer to the original toy as well as the cartoon. But I really do like both. I mean, I almost feel like they could be like siblings or different characters or something if you wanted to make your own headcanon because they do look so different because the paint job really just makes the same toy look that much different. But they both look great. I'm a big fan of both color schemes and I think they look fantastic. He comes with this kind of whip accessory, which is kind of neat. But yeah, I really like the color. It almost reminds me of like Hellboy or something. Just the color scheme there. Really, really neat on that. Uh, next up, we have Man-at-Arms. And you can see he is Sans Mustache. Uh, if we take a look at the Mega Constructs Man-at-Arms, he's got the mustache and he's got the blue helmet, which again is uh, more closely resembling the cartoon. I don't believe the original toy had a mustache at all. I believe that's solely from the cartoon. So with these two guys, you can see that the color scheme is vastly different. He's got more subdued, uh, kind of lighter yellow and kind of a olive uh, green coloring, where he's got a very vibrant green and bright orange. He's also got these two clips on the back so that you can mount his weapon, which is actually really cool. So let me put this one to the side. And I will show you how this works. You can see that there's a little notch in the side of his weapon. So you just take this off and then you can actually peg this onto his back. There we go. So he actually has weapon storage, which I think is really neat. That's just a really nice little attention to detail. But again, this guy is definitely uh, from like the mini comics or the original figure because he does not have the color scheme of the mustache like the Mega Constructs line does or Mega Constructs Heroes. Now, the one I would say is the most different is Tila. And I will show off the Tila from the Mega Constructs Heroes line. This is definitely the kind of Tila that we were used to from the toy as well as the cartoon. In the original mini comics, uh, Tila was called the Warrior Goddess. And from what I understand, the original idea was to kind of have two action figures in one. So when she was wearing the headdress, she was the warrior goddess. And then when you would take it off, and this is kind of a soft rubber plastic, so you can do that, you could use her as Tila. And it was kind of a way to, because I guess they assumed that little boys in the 80s wouldn't want to buy female action figures. But if it was two action figures in one, if it was two characters, maybe that would help sell it. The original toy did not have the green tint, but she did have the green tint in the mini comics. So that's why they put it on here. And then this is kind of a softer plastic a little rubbery actually you just kind of put that back on make sure this gets back on here there we go but i think it looks great i think they did a great job with the snake mask giving her that green hue which is uh correct to the mini comics i think was a neat touch and like i said you do have two tila figures at the end of the day but they're so different the weapons are different the color scheme the headdress that it really does feel like two completely different characters. So it doesn't bother me to have two of them whatsoever. And again, they just, they crushed it with this. I love this so much. And then of course, we will take a look at the Sorceress, which is the exclusive figure, not available any other way. She has again, this kind of soft rubber uh, feather cape, I guess, for lack of a better term. She has her staff, which looks great, very faithful to the original toy. And again, all the same articulation, head joint, with the ball joint there on the head. But I mean, just the detail, the paint, all looks fantastic. She's great. And then the, it also comes with the Falcon. This can uh, come off. This is just like a little perch. But you do have this nicely painted Falcon. Very static. You know, there's not too much going on with it. There's no articulation to speak of. It's just a Falcon. But again, very cool. All of these figures look absolutely fantastic in my opinion. I was really, really excited to get all these guys. Even though I do have most of these characters already, the fact that they have such vastly different color schemes and paint jobs uh, almost makes them like different characters. I know it doesn't really, but it's neat to have two different interpretations of the characters, one based on the mini comics, one more faithful to the cartoon, 
And I'm just really happy they didn't just jam the same six figures you probably already own into this set. If you do own the other figures, these are at least different enough that it makes it worth owning both. So fantastic job with the figures. Before we move on to the castle itself, I just wanted to quick dive into these two weapon racks that you get because I was really impressed with these. They're so faithful to the original toy. Uh, I mean, you know, the extra accessories that you get. You have another axe, you have a shield, you have kind of a mace here, two little guns. But just the detail that goes into the guns. I mean, they look exactly like some of the accessories from the original toys that it just blows me away how well they were able to recreate all of these things. I mean, all of these, like, axes, they're so reminiscent of the original toy. Like, this gun I remember exactly from when I was a kid. And this mace over here on the side. And just the whole build of the weapon rack itself just looks so much like the weapon rack that actually came with Grayskull, the original toy when I was a kid. They absolutely crushed it, and I'm just so impressed. All these accessories remind me... I mean, look at this sword. This was the sword that opens Grayskull. It's exactly the sword from when I was a kid. I mean, they nailed it. I know Mega Constructs is owned by Mattel, who owns uh, He-Man because they made it back in the day. <laughs> they created the property. So it's easy. They must have... They probably have these things, you know, on file somewhere in their archive so that they can go and pull it, and that's how they can recreate them so perfectly. But just as a, as a fan of He-Man from when I was a kid still to today... It just blew my mind when I saw all these accessories, you know, completely made exactly the same as I remember them. The details are perfect and you get such a host of accessories here that it just, it blew me away. It blew my mind. I definitely think this is the better out of the two. This one's a little simple, but just the, the array of accessories here is really fantastic. All right. So here is Castle Grayskull itself. So much detail. I can't get over it. I mean, the piece count on this thing was ridiculous. But there are so many tiny little pieces for detail to make this whole thing come together. They did a really good job on this, you guys. I can't, I can't stress it enough how impressed I am with this whole thing. I'm going to do my best to get this all in frame. But it's, it's so massive, I'm going to have a hard time. So I'm going to kind of be doing a lot of cuts and, and panning and everything like that. So here is the front of the castle. Let me scroll scroll up here pan up um you can see that there's a flag up here with kind of two clashing swords the laser gun from the original castle is present you can see that there the face of gray skull with the jaws and everything with the drawbridge really really well done this does close and you can see there's the drawbridge there this is the only part of the set i'm not a huge fan of the gimmick to make this stay closed just it's not working for me i don't know if i'm doing something wrong i probably am but you're supposed to be able to insert the sword into this tiny hole here and there's a little mechanism right here that is supposed to release when you do that so that this closes up but yeah and see that's the other thing the, <laughs> these two pieces here on the front they're very tiny little pieces they actually don't fit in the the entryway so the arch that's used here for the door these don't fit so if you try to keep closing this the little corner of this piece will kind of hit that and eventually they'll just fly off but it just i don't know it won't for whatever reason it won't stay closed so i don't know what i'm doing but anyway it still looks impressive even with the door open because it looks like the jaw of the castle and then that's really neat uh as i pan this up again do a quick 360 now this is closed obviously it does open up like the original playset which is very cool here is the back they have all this kind of thatched roof up here which is really impressive the level of detail it was definitely tedious at times putting on all of these tiny little pieces but the end result is well worth it very very neat there's a little doorway down here that you can actually knock away and now I've knocked it in. I can't get it back out. There we go. So you can see this here uh, is a built up like archway. And that just pops onto these two pieces right here. And so that way you can kind of knock a villain through there or have it be a secret passageway, something like that. All the detail, like the trim around the windows and everything looks great. 
the way they kind of alternate the cylindrical pieces with the rectangular pieces to make it curve is a really smart way of doing things, which I really appreciate. There's also a little passageway right here, which opens up onto this kind of walkway here, which I think looks great. So all in all, just a really, really nice job with the details on the outside of the castle. I'm just, again, super impressed with it. But let's go ahead, let's get inside, and let's take a closer look. So opening this up is very simple, just like the original toy. There's a little clasp right here. You just kind of pull it apart. And then we open up to the inside. And I have to say, it's really, really cool. They went out of their way to make sure that all the features you'd want to be here are here, plus a few that I felt like were new, that I felt like the original toy didn't have. Uh, of course, we have the throne with the trap door, which we'll take a closer look at in a minute. You have a jail cell down here. I believe the original didn't actually have a jail cell. It just kind of had a sticker on the floor, that iconic sticker of all the crazy creatures trying to come out of it. And you'll see how they kind of recreated that in a minute. Um, again, we have that gun that I said I feel like is very iconic from the original. That didn't so much swivel, if I remember correctly. That just kind of tilted up and down, so this has a 360 swivel on it, which is pretty neat. Again, you have the flag up top with the crossing swords there. I do think it's neat how they also tried to recreate the handle of the original playset. Do not try to pick this up by that handle because it will not hold the weight. Uh, it'll basically just pop the handle right off. But I do think it's neat that they went out of their way to kind of recreate that to make it look like the original playset. So there's a lot of play features here. Let's just go ahead and dive in. So on the ground floor of the right side, you have the entranceway from the drawbridge. You can see how it closes up. Again, I don't really know why I can't get this to work. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here so you can actually see how this is supposed to work. It's the tiniest little black kind of nub piece that's, I guess, supposed to catch in between two of the teeth. But it just doesn't really do anything. And I don't know how that's originally supposed to work. I'm not really sure about that. But over here, as you can see, we have the uh, little training dummy, which, again, was part of the original set. Spins around there. It is pegged into the ground, but if you want to take it out and set it inside... Of course, you can certainly do that. Over here, we have the jail cell. Now, this is the gate here, but actually this entire door opens up. And it's going to be kind of hard to see in there. I'll have to see if I can have... Where's my extra... Here we go. I have my extra light so I can share this off. So you can see that there's a hanging chain... And then there's this weird, like, set of pink arms. I'll see if I can actually remove this so I can show you guys. It just pegs into a small peg on the floor. It's this weird set of pink arms. <laughs> and I don't really know. It almost reminds me of the back, uh, Baxter Stockman from Ninja, uh, Ninja Turtles. He had two arms like this. So I believe that's supposed to simulate... Oh, I've gone ahead and broken that. I'll have to fix that. Eh, maybe I can pop this right back in there. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So it, it's supposed to simulate that sticker is what I think they're going for. But I don't know. It's just kind of a weird set of arms that are just on the floor in there. So I don't know. The chain's nice. I think the chain gives ambiance, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, you also just have this kind of like, I don't know if it's supposed to look like a key or if it's just supposed to look like a big handle to the cell. But either way, very neat. I appreciate the jail cell, and we'll get into the trap door in a minute. But let's go ahead and take over here on the ground floor on the left side. So to be honest, the ground floor on the left side is a little plain. There's that uh, breakaway door section that I showed you about earlier. Which if I can reach to the side. Uh, that just is an entryway in and out now. Let's see if I can put this back in. There we go. Uh, otherwise, we have the elevator, which we can get to now. It just kind of rides up and down. And it's kind of neat. There's a spring piece in there, which makes it constantly like held against this rail system so that it's not sliding up and down. But you can just kind of move it with your hands. And there's three levels. 
we'll get to the other levels later on but i do think that's kind of neat but that takes up pretty much the entire like left quadrant this was a whole this tower was a whole section when you built it on its own to just build the elevator but the original toy did have an elevator so i do appreciate that they put that in here let's see if we can bring in he-man remove him from the base here and you can see that there is three peg holes here so you would kind of just peg him in on the outer two pegs and then when his axe isn't getting in the way let's go ahead and remove the axe there <laughs> he can travel up in the elevator which i think looks pretty cool i do appreciate how the elevator works so next up we have the middle section or second floor of the right section over here uh, this does if i pan over to the side have that door i showcased earlier where you can now go from this section here out into this nice section here on the side love this little walkway out here I think that's really cool to have that little secret door but if we come back over here we have the throne room so we have a nice look at the throne here you can see that there are two little flags uh, one with a bird and then one with a wolf both winged which I think is pretty neat uh, I'm revealing how this works I have to save that for a moment <laughs> uh, but yeah you can have a character sit on the throne it doesn't really have a way for them to like connect like they don't attach like say a lego minifigure would but they can just sit in here and it works well enough i mean i don't see any problems with them you can even bend the knees a little bit you can see he sits in the throne pretty well i think that looks pretty good uh over here in this corner let me move my camera here and we'll zoom in a little bit and I'll try to shine a little bit more light in here. You can see there's kind of a tiny little computer apparatus and then there's this really strange, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a picture or a screen, but you can see it looks like kind of a futuristic like space suit with a gun or maybe it's a wetsuit or something i mean the nice thing about masters of the universe they had fantasy they had sci-fi it had it all i mean they had robots giant tigers the works you can see over here that there is the piece uh very resembling the original kind of trapdoor piece that looked like a rug so basically how this works and let me get another character here we'll try beast man you would have him stand here I'll remove his whip accessory as well he would stand here on the rug let me get the light back into place and i will zoom out you would pull the throne back <laughs> and he would fall down into the jail cell below which we would then open and you can see he's down there dealing with those giant pink arms the nice thing is while this gap here is primarily for this piece to go to fold in when the set folds in half you can also use it to kind of pull the carpet piece back up and then you slide the throne back and you can see that there's a little yellow tab underneath that's connected to a pole so that that stays in place there and that's how you can lift the carpet back up through this little opening right there so once again, the left side of the playset has quite considerably less action features, but we do have the elevator, which I showed off earlier. We have this new computer apparatus, which I don't remember the original toy having. I kind of remember the left side of the original toy being very plain, pretty much had the elevator and that was about it. So I do appreciate this kind of new computer apparatus that they have going on here. I'm assuming it's some kind of communication device. As you can see that there's kind of a screen here uh, that has like planets and, and a space shot there uh, the other thing is you can actually rotate this out and there's a little kind of hidden cavity back there and I'm not really sure what that's for if it's for storage or just kind of a hiding spot you can kind of put a character back there if you want uh, maybe just storage if you're looking for somewhere to store excess figures something like that and then you can kind of close that back up I'm not really sure what the purpose is for having it on a hinge, but it does exist and I, you know, it's another feature that you can use. But I do think the little computer apparatus is kind of neat 
especially when the original toy really had nothing going on on the left side. So I do appreciate that they decided to put something in there. Uh, and it kind of goes along with the little computer apparatus that's over here on this side. So this is kind of the communications area <laughs> of the castle. So now we move on to the top floor of the right side. Again, you have that cannon I mentioned previously. You can take one of your figures. We'll bring He-Man in here. And you can just connect him onto the base here. You can have him put his hands up here like he's manning the cannon. And then again, you have a 360 spin as long as this is uh, up high enough to clear this. <laughs> but I think it's neat because this definitely, this section here reminds me of the original toy. As I remember correctly, it looked pretty much like this and it kind of slid into a groove and that's what kept it in place. And then just the guns could move up and down. But this actually gives you a 360 spin here, which I really appreciate. I think that looks good. Here we have a little door which opens up. And this just reveals kind of a little crystal area with a globe. They always kind of have the sorceress next to it. So I don't know if this is like her kind of sacred magic prey area. I don't really know what you would call this. Maybe just like a crystal ball where she can, you know, see things that are happening. Um, but they always kind of associate, like in the packaging and all the... Uh, as you're putting together the instructions have pictures to show up the play features and they always kind of have sorceress here in this room uh, can't actually fit inside the room it's a very shallow room it pretty much has space for the crystal and then it has some kind of crystals here around the floor as you can see kind of built up so it just is a neat little area uh, otherwise you can keep it closed no big deal here is the other kind of parapet that has that um flag that I mentioned earlier. I forgot the word flag. I don't know. In any case, uh, we'll take He-Man. He can kind of stand over here. There's plenty of room to pose characters. You could even have two of them doing battle up here. Plenty of room up here for all that, which I think is really cool. Uh, as you can see, there are steps over here onto the left side. So they did think of that. You can actually come down the steps and now you're over here in the left side. So sadly, the left side is kind of barren again. Not too much going on, but again, there's plenty of room to pose characters up here. You could definitely have a couple people facing off in a battle. And again, the elevator does come all the way up to the top floor. You also see that it has these two golden skulls on the top of the elevator. I'm not really sure what that's about, but they're nice and decorative. Uh, <laughs> again... They just kind of come out of left field for me. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But I also do kind of like the the roof piece that they've constructed up here. I think that looks really good. And again, I love how they kind of recreated the handle of the original playset. It's not attached well enough to actually support the weight of the playset. But I do think it's neat that they went that extra mile. I think this is a really fantastic set. I remember when I bought the TMNT Technodrome, which is another really huge set that Mega Constructs did. Might have even been Mega Blocks back then. I remember thinking it was very impressive in how big it was, but it didn't look like it had a ton of play features or it didn't have a lot of accessories. You know, the different uh, parts of the Technodrome weren't very detailed. It just kind of looked like vast. Like it just was big for the sake of being big. This, I feel like, is a nice balance of the amount of play features and details and the sheer size of it. Um, I remember when I was putting this together and I had completed the first half and I remember thinking to myself, even if they had just done the first half of this as a play set and didn't include this part. Now I know they were going for the authentic authenticity of the original toy, which is why they did do both halves and the why it can close and everything like that. And don't get me wrong. I love that. I really do. But I remember thinking, even if they had just done the first half, so that way you could kind of have it as a display piece if you just wanted to look at the front. But there's play features here. There was enough here that I felt like if they would have released that for like 100 bucks, maybe 150 that could have been sufficient. But the fact that they just, you know, went for that complete authenticity of the original toy. So many nods to the originals. All of the character designs with these little figures are so perfectly modeled after those mini comics. And again, I understand some people don't really enjoy the mini comics. And they want something more in the filmation cartoon route. Those uh, Mega Constructs heroes exist for that purpose. So it's kind of neat that they went a different route. Instead of just giving you the exact same figures you probably already had. 
they at least gave them unique color schemes and paint jobs. So if you have both versions, it feels like you have two different figures, which I really appreciate. So the only thing that I find fault in this entire set, like I said earlier, is the drawbridge on Castle Grayskull. It just really doesn't work. And again, maybe I'm doing something wrong. That's very possible. Um, but I just can't seem to get it to latch close. Now, don't get me wrong. It looks awesome open, so I'm not that heartbroken about it. But it just seems weird to me. I wish like that gimmick was a little bit more refined so that it would close and open easily. And so that sword uh, technique worked. Like the original toy, it was just a latch that you pushed over. And then when you put the sword in, it pulled the latch back over to the left. And that's what made it come down. Could have just done that again. Worked perfectly well in the original toy. I don't quite know how this is supposed to work. And I guess that's the part that annoys me the most. I'm just not even sure how it's supposed to work. But everything else about the set I love. I love the dungeon. The trapdoor works great. The throne looks good. All of the different banners and flags are very nicely detailed and painted. You have the two kind of computer areas with the view screen, which I think looks good. The elevator works very well. Uh, you have the hidden breakaway wall. You have the secret compartment behind the one computer. You have the sorceress's area. Uh, again, all of the figures look fantastic. The spinning turret gun. And just the level of detail on the outside of the castle is phenomenal. I mean, it's just so well done with all the tiny intricate pieces to show off the texture, to show off all of the rocks and the, you know, rocky areas at the base of the castle. I just, I can't sing the praises of this set enough. I really do enjoy it quite a bit. It lived up to all of my expectations, and I really couldn't be happier. Now, I do know $250 is a hefty price tag for a toy, but I do think with the amount of sheer pieces that went into this thing, the size of it, the figures, all the details, I do think it's worth the money. I mean, the amount of pieces that just went into the rocky facade of the castle so intricate so well done like i said all the figures look great i do think it has a lot of play features i was comparing it to the technodrome because i actually built that recently as well and i was comparing it to that and i just really felt like that didn't have a ton of play features whereas i feel like this does uh, also this is such a perfect homage to the original toy from the 80s uh, all of the things you remember from that place that are here plus new things uh, and I just feel like there's a lot of room to display tons of characters. I know that they're doing uh, Stratos and Scareglow very soon in the um, Mega Constructs Heroes line. So that we're going to be getting more Master of the Universe characters. I hope they keep going. We had the Wind Raider. Wind Raider. I always have trouble saying that. We had the Wind Raider set uh, earlier in the year. That was a great set. I hope they keep going with vehicles. I just hope these are selling well enough that they keep going. Oh, I forgot to bring in the uh little there's actually a ladder too i forgot to show off this ladder it's a simple construction uh but it does exist so there is a ladder as well wanted to show that off along with the weapon racks so yeah there's just there's a ton of stuff and the other thing that's crazy is the amount of pieces that you have left over with this thing are nuts there's a crazy amount of pieces left over uh, so you could build something else with that. Uh, you definitely won't run into problems where, you know, you can't find a piece or, you know, oh no, I got shorted a piece. At least I hadn't had that problem. The other thing is numbered bags. They had numbered bags, which were absolutely fantastic. You opened up that first He-Man box I showed you earlier and it was numbered, say, 1 through 15. You just It'll tell you in the instructions, open bag 1 and 2, you build. Then it'll say, okay, now it's time for bag 3 and 4, you build so much easier again to compare it to the technodrome it by the end it got to be a very frustrating build because it was literally just here are all the bags good luck and you're searching for a small piece across so many different bags it was very nerve-wracking uh and this was such a much faster and enjoyable build the build techniques were really neat i will say though also you got these two pieces which i believe this is supposed to be some kind of you know piece to remove like kind of like the way lego includes a brick separator and then this is some kind of clip piece i'm not really sure what's going on with either of these <laughs> i didn't really use them at all because i'm really not sure how they were supposed to work but they are included so i wanted to at least mention that before i close but anyway at this point i'm just rambling it's a great set if you can afford it i definitely think it's worth the money if you want to take the risk and see if it goes on sale later on 
you can do that, but I don't know. Because this is such a specialty item, I don't think it's going to be in normal stores. So I think you're going to have to buy it from places like Walmart.com, Target.com. Certainly Amazon's going to have it. Probably GameStop, Big Bad Toy Store, things like that. So you might not want to wait around. If you really, really want it, I say go ahead and buy it if you can afford it. I think it's worth the money and I don't think you will be disappointed. But if, you, if you're a kind of casual fan about it and you want to wait for a sale, you know, by all means... But just know that I don't think they're going to make a ton of these. I don't think they're going to be like a Toys R Us where you can sit around for a while and get them marked down, something like that. I'm not saying they're never going to have sales. Obviously, sales happen in different retailers. But for some reason, I just have the feeling that this is probably going to be underproduced more so than overproduced. And I don't mean it's going to be underproduced. I'm just saying if I had to bet underproduced or overproduced, I get the feeling it would probably be more towards underproduced than overproduced. So, you know, waiting for clearance might not be an option. They might go, and once they're gone, they're gone. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just speculating here, but it just kind of seems like... I remember watching the Technodrome sit around, and I feel like Mega Constructs probably learned from that. With the bigger sets, it's, it's harder to sit around and take up space and wait for clearance. Especially at online retailers, but... Again, this is just me speculating and I'm rambling again. So if you can afford it and you want this set, I say go ahead and pull the trigger. It's not going to disappoint. I definitely think it's going to be uh, something that you will enjoy if you're a Master of the Universe fan like myself. So I'm going to end the review here. Sorry for such a long-winded review, but I just kind of gushing on the thing because I love it so much. <laughs> and it really just met all my expectations and I'm happy. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.